Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am Dr. Mohsin Jamil from Medical Unit 5 DHU Hospital Faslabad. Today we will discuss the acute coronary syndrome. As we all know, acute coronary syndrome consists of the stable angina, unstable angina, and STEMI and STEMI. Before going to discuss all these topics in details, I have put some clinical scenario which will make you easy to understand all these topics. Case 1, a 45 year old man comes to your clinic for the routine follow up. He gives a history of the chest pain on walking half kilometer on foot. There is no history of dyspnea, orthopnea. He smokes at two cigarettes per day. He has got the history of the angioplasty of the left anterior descending artery five years back. He is type 2 diabetic and hypertensive, taking lisinopril and gilimib by 2 mg daily. His pulse is 90 per minute, blood pressure 145 by 90 mm of Hg, respiratory rate is 14 per minute and temperature is normal. The rest of the physical examination is normal. Now what is your diagnosis on the basis of history and examination of this case? The options are the stable angina, unstable angina and STEMI ACS. STEMI ACS or musculoskeletal pain. As in this case, there is no ECG present. We have no idea about the STEMI and NSTEMI. And the symptoms are only present in on the exertion after walking half kilometer. And the symptoms are not present during the test. So the unstable angina is less likely. And the, so the diagnosis is stable angina. We will move towards the case number 2. A 55 year old male presents in the emergency department with central chest pain radiating to the left arm for 20 for the last 20 minutes while sitting in his study room. The pulse is 96, blood pressure is 160 by 110, temperature is normal, respiratory rate 18 per minute and ECG is shown below. The cardiac enzymes are normal. Point to be noted is the cardiac enzymes are normal. So this is the ECG of the patient having a typical chest pain at rest. The ECG shows the ST segment depression in one AVL in lead to V3, V4, V5 and V6. But the cardiac enzymes of this patient are What is the diagnosis of this patient? Stable angina? No, because the patient is having the pain at rest. The stable angina is characterized by the pain experienced after the exertion. Unstable angina could be, it could be the unstable angina. and STEMI, uh, it could be the NSTEMI, but the cardiac enzymes are normal. If the cardiac enzymes are raised, then the answer would be the NSTEMI. The stem mean uh, it is ruled out by the ECG. A skeletal pain it is not the right answer. So the right answer is it is unstable angina in which there uh, can be the non-specific ECG changes and the typical chest pain and the cardiac enzymes are normal. Case number three, 65 year old female developed a sudden central chest pain radiating to her left arm not relieved by the nitrates associated with cool sweating and sinking of heart. The pulse is 100 per minute, blood pressure 160 by 100, temperature 98 and respiratory rate is 15 per minute. Test of the examination is normal. ECG is shown below and the cardiac enzymes are raised. Top T is positive. This ECG shows as a segment depression in one AVL lead to V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. The patient is having a typical chest pain not relieved by the rest and nitrates. ECG finding as a segment depression with raised cardiac enzymes. Then what is your diagnosis of this scenario? It is an STEMI non ST segment elevation MI ACS. 
Now we will move towards case number 4. 60 year old male presented with sudden severe central chest pain for the last 2 hours associated with the cold, sweating and sinking of the heart not relieved by the rest and struggling on the Pulse is 90 per minute, blood pressure 180 per 90, temperature normal and respiratory rate is, rate is also normal. JVP is raised and respiratory examination shows a bi vessel fine crackles. ECG is shown below. Carding enzymes are raised and top T is positive. This is the ECG which shows the typical ST segment elevation in V1, V2, V3 and V4. After this scenario and ECG, the diagnosis would be STEM, ST segment elevation acute coronary syndrome. So the ischemic heart disease is, is a condition in which there is inadequate blood supply and oxygen to the proportion of the myocardium. It typically occurs when there is an imbalance between the myocardial oxygen supply and the demand. The most common cause of the myocardial ischemia is atherosclerosis of an apicardial coronary artery sufficient to cause a regional reduction in the myocardial blood flow and inadequate perfusion to myocardial. As we have discussed, NSTEMI, ACS, it includes NSTEMI, STEMI, and unstable angina. Unstable angina has non occlusive thrombus, non specific ECG changes, and normal cardiac enzymes. While the NSTEMI has occluding thrombus sufficient to cause the tissue doubling and mild myocardial necrosis, it may or may not have an ST7 depression or T wave inversion or ICD. Elevated card enzymes are present in NSTEMI. While the STEMI has complete thrombus occluding and there is ST segment elevation on ECD or new left bundle plasma. Cardiac enzymes are always elevated and more severe symptom. This is the same slide as we have discussed acute coronary syndrome uh, in which we have done ECG if ECG has ST segment elevation then we will go for the cardiac enzymes and drop T if the cardiac enzymes and drop T are positive and uh, with ST segment elevation it is called ST segment elevation myocardial infarction if the patient is having uh, no ST segment elevation at all then we will go for the cardiac enzymes and drop T if the cardiac enzymes is positive without ST segment elevation MI, it is called NSTEM. If both, if the cardiac enzymes are negative with non specific ECG changes, then it is called as unstable angina. Acute coronary syndrome is a spectrum of acute ischemia related syndrome ranging from the unstable angina to myocardial infarction with or without ST segment elevation that are secondary to the acute plaque rupture or to the plaque erosion. The acute coronary syndrome are classified on the basis of presenting ECG as either non-ST segment elevation ACS or ST segment elevation. The distinction in the acute coronary syndrome between the patients with and without ST segment elevation is essential to determine the need of the fusion therapy. As the fibronolytic therapy is harmful in non-ST segment elevation ACS, unlike the ST segment elevation in MI, where the acute perfusion saved. The cardiovascular disease remains the most common cause of death, responsible for the 35% of all the death. The WHO has estimated that 3.8 million men and 3.4 million women die from the cardiovascular diseases each year. The cardiovascular diseases are highly prevalent, diagnosed in 80 million adults and up to the 35% of the adult population. In growing prevalence of the obesity, type 2 diabetes mellitus and metabolic syndrome are important risk factors for the atherosclerosis, which we will discuss. So the, the risk factor, there are two types of the risk factor, non-modifiable risk factors and modifiable risk factor. Non-modifiable risk factor include the age, sex, fem uh, family history, and the event in the first degree. 
The modifiable risk factors include the smoking, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, lack of exercise, obesity, weight circumflex, lack of diet rich in the fruits and vegetables, eating pattern, sleep pattern, and home. As we all know, advancing age is a more powerful and independent risk factor for the atherosclerosis and gender also plays a role uh, as the male gender are more prone to have the ischemic heart disease and coronary syndrome while the uh, after the menopause, pre-menopausal women have lower rates of the disease than the men. The gender difference disappears after the menopause. The family history, younger uh, the, young, the younger the onset in the first degree relative. According to the WHO, smoking is the number one prevalent cause of the coronary artery disease. After the one year quitting of the, the risk of the coronary artery disease decreases by the 50%. The one cigarette reduces the life. Dyslipidemia is an important modifiable risk factor for the coronary artery diseases. The risk increases progressively with higher level of LDL cholesterol and decreases with the higher level of HDL cholesterol, which is also called as good. The diabetes mellitus is the most important risk factor for all forms of the atherosclerosis, especially for the type 2 diabetes mellitus. It is often associated with a diffuse disease that is difficult. Hypertension, uh, the incidence of the atherosclerosis increases as the blood pressure uh, and the related systolic and diastolic blood pressure as well as pulse pressure. The antihypertensive therapy reduces the cardiovascular mortality, stroke and heart failure. This diagram shows the EHA guidelines for the hypertension. According to the EHA 2017, ACC or EHA 2017, normal blood pressure should be less than 120 mm of Hg systolic and diastolic should be less than 80 mm of, mm of Hg. If the blood pressure ranges from the 120 to 129 systolic, it is called elevated blood pressure. If the blood pressure, systolic blood pressure is between the 120 to 139 and diastolic blood pressure between the 80 to 89, it is called stage 1 hypertension. If the blood pressure is greater than 140 mm of Hg systolic and greater than 90 mm of Hg diastolic, it is called stage 2 hypertension. And if the blood pressure is greater than 180 mm of Hg systolic and uh, greater than 120 diastolic, it is called hypertensive crisis. This slide shows the type of blood pressure. According to the European Society of the Cardiology, it should be less than 140 by 90. While uh, according to the American Heart Association EHA, it should be less than 130 by 80. Other risk factors include the homostatic uh, factors, platelet activation, and higher plasma fibrinogen concentration are associated with increased risk of the coronary thrombus, whereas the antiphospholipid antibodies are associated with the recurrent RT. Sedentary lifestyle is the important risk factor for the coronary artery syndrome and ischemic heart disease. The regular exercises, brisk walking, cycling, swimming has a protective effect. Whereas inactivity in, in roughly doubles the risk of the coronary artery disease and is a major factor. Obesity, particularly in the central or the truncal, is an independent risk factor. It often associated with the other adverse factors such as hypertension, diabetes. And this slide shows the difference in the cut point of the obesity in South Asians and European people. These the, the parameters are somewhat different for the South Asian and Asians from the Europeans. Uh, in case of the South Asians, uh, it is according to the BMI. In the case of the South Asians, if the BMI is between 18 to 22.9, it is normal weight. And if it is between the 23 to 24.9, it is called overweight. If it is greater than 25, it is called obese. While in the case of the Europeans, these are the different. It ranges from the 18.5 to 24.9, and uh, overweight is uh, from 25 to 29.9, and obese is about 30 BMI. 
there is one to one relationship between the bmi and the mortality as the bmi increases the death toll this slide shows the proposed classification for the increase in bmi and corp mortality risk as a normal um, if the bmi is between 18.5 to 22.9 the corp mortality risk is average if the patient is overweight the corp mortality risk is increased as in the obese one and obese two it a uh, corp mortality risk increases from the moderate to severe this is the same and uh, slide which shows the overweight and obese and normal weight persons and uh, it also shows abdominal obesity and in the men in the case of the men the waist circumference greater than 90 cm is called obese in case of the women waist circumference of the 18 cm in the case of the asians or in the uh, europeans in these are the 120 cm in the case of the men and in the female uh, greater than 18 88 cm it is called obese diet deficient in the fresh fruits vegetables oily and saturated fatty acids are associated with increased risk excess alcohol consumption is associated with hypertension and cardiac social deprivation is strongly associated with cardiovascular disease this may be partially due to the associated with lifestyle risk factors such as smoking and this is a term it is defined a metabolic syndrome it is a term it is defined as concentration of the three or the more abdominal obesity as we have discussed in detail triglyceride level greater than 150 mg per deciliter or above hdl cholesterol less than 40 mm of hg in the case of the men and less than 50 mg per deciliter for the women the fasting blood sugar greater than 110 mg per deciliter or higher after discussing the risk factor we will move towards a stable angina reproducibly by the exercise in motion stress and relieved within 15 to 20 minutes by the test of some simple nerve waves the typical patient with the angina is man over the 50 years of the age or the woman over the 60 years of the age who complains of the episodic chest discomfort typically described as having a pressure squeezing smoothing croaking and only a great deal of back pain when the patient is asked to localize the sensation he or she typically places a hand over the sternum sometimes with the clenched fist it indicates a squeezing center chest substernal discomfort it is called a lemon chest angina is usually crescendo descendo in nature typically lasts 2 to 5 minutes and can radiate to the either shoulder or the both arms especially the ulnar surfaces of the forearm and the hand it may also occur at rest while the patient is in this is the diagram typical diagram shows a lemon sign central chest pain uh, squeezing in nature and the second diagram shows the radiation of the cardiac pain it can radiate towards the and neck jaw uh, shoulder uh, and the ulnar side of the left hand epigastrium and both of the shoulder angina equivalents are the symptoms of the myocardial ischemia other than the angina they include the dyspnea nausea fatigue and faintness and are more common in elderly and diabetic the patient may be wakened at night by the typical chest discomfort and dyspnea nocturnal angina may be due to the episodic tachycardia diminished oxygen oxygenation as the respiratory pattern changes during the sleep or uh, expansion of the intrathoracic blood volume that occurs with many patient report a fixed threshold for the angina which occur predictably at a certain level of activity such as climbing to flights of the stairs exertional angina typically is relieved in 1 to 5 minutes by slowing or ceasing the activity and even more rapidly by the rest of sublingual nerve non st segment elevation acs it includes unstable angina and anastomy non st segment elevation typical chest discomfort is severe and has at least one of the three features number one is occurrence at the rest or with the minimal exertion 
lasting greater than 10 minutes. Number two is a recent onset that is within the prior two weeks. Number three is crescendo pattern that is distinctly more severe, prolonged, or frequent than the previous episode. The diagnosis of the anstemi is established if the patient with any of these features without ST segment elevations develop the evidence of the myocardial necrosis as reflected in abnormally elevated level of the biochemical markers like myoglobin, CKMB, and TROP T and TROP I. The ST segment elevation MI it has a certain criteria. It includes the history of the prolonged chest discomfort or angina equivalent to the greater than 30 minutes and the presence of uh, more than 1 mm ST segment elevation in two consecutive limb leads or 2 mm elevation in chest leads. New onset left bundle branch block and presence of the elevated car. In pathophysiology of the ACS Atherosclerosis has, a, has important role in the pathophysiology. Atherosclerosis is a progressive inflammatory disorder of the arterial wall that is characterized by the focal lipid deposits of the atheroma that remain clinically silent until they become the large enough to impair the tissue perfusion or until ulceration or disruption of the lesion occur in the thrombotic occlusion or the distal embolization. So the ACS is caused by the imbalance between the myocardial oxygen supply or the demand from any one of the following causes that lead to the thrombus formation. Number one is the disruption of the unstable coronary plaque due to the plaque rupture, erosion, calcified protruding nodule that lead to the intracoronary thrombus formation or inflammatory. This diagram shows the intraluminal plaque formation with the fibrous cap. The second diagram shows the, uh, the cap ruptures. After the rupture of the cap, the blood clot forms around the rupture and blocking the artery, which occludes the blood flow. This is show, uh, this diagram shows the plaque rupture and the thrombus formation and occluding the blood flow to the myocardium which results in the necrosis of the The other mechanism include the coronary artery vasoconstriction, gradual intraluminal narrowing and increased myocardial oxygen demand produced by the conditions such as fever, tachycardia and thyrotoxicosis. In history, the chest pain resembles the angina but lasts more than 30 minutes. It is more intense not relieved by the rest of sublingual nitrate in the case of the ST segment elevation MI accompanied by the dyspnea, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, syncope, cold sweating. It may present as an extreme exhaustion and impending fear of the dead. It may occur without chest pain in hypertensive, diabetic, elderly or post operative Usually the physical examination patient is restless and distressed till tend to lie stand still and the skin is cold, moist due to a sympathetic discharge and the breathing may be labored. There may be the bilateral fine crackles of the bronchi heard um, when auscultation of the lung. Blood pressure may be increased due to the anxiety or decreased due to the heart failure. The heart rate may vary from the bradycardia to the tachycardia according to the situation. On auscultation, the first and second heart sounds may be the diminished as a result of the decreased cardiac The fourth heart sound is audible in almost all the patients with MI, whereas the third heart sound is detected in only uh, 10 to 20 percent due to the heart failure. There may be the transient systolic murmur may be heard by the papillary muscle ischemia. After about 48 to 72 hours, many patients acquire the pericardia. The clinical stratification of the initial presentation, the patient with the acute ST segment elevation are stratified on the low and high risk group on the basis of the gray score, gray stratification, it is a risk stratification in the acute coronary syndrome. Score, it has a certain points, clip score, systolic blood pressure, heart rate, age, serum creatinine level. Clip score is the auscultation of the heart 
the class one there is no signs of the pulmonary edema and the point is zero when the patient is having a sign of the pulmonary edema and the rails are present up to the mid zone of the lungs it is uh, it, it will we will give the 20 the class clip class three the patient is having a frank pulmonary edema and the rails and the crackles are present up to the apices and the point given are 39 in the class 4 the patient is having an acute pulmonary edema with cardiogenic shock and the points are 59 this slide shows the uh, systolic blood pressure with their points if the it is less than or equal to the 80 mm of hg the point will be 58 if it is greater than 200 it will be. this slide shows the heart rate with respect to the point if the heart rate is less than 50 point is zero if the heart rate is greater than 200 the points are 46 we uh, give the point according to the situation of the and these are the points according to the age ranging from 30 to 90 years when the points improve from 0 to 100 these are the points for the creatinine level these all our tables are given in to convert the serum creatinine in from micromole to the milligram per deciliter divided by the AT. The other risk factor are the cardiac arrest at the admission. If there is cardiac arrest at the admission, 39 points are given, ST segment deviation, 28 points are given, and elevated cardiac enzymes, the 14 points are given. Then after this, we will add up all these points according to the situation this slide shows the total points with the uh, corresponding probability of the death in hospital if the total points are less than 60 the probability of the death in the hospital is less than 0.2 and if it is greater than the total points are, are greater than 250 the probability of the death in the hospital is greater than 52% so we will uh, do an example 65 year old male having systolic blood pressure of 99 mm of HD the heart rate is 100 per minute and clip class 2 has serum creatinine of 76 micromole per minute per, per liter on admission there is no cardiac arrest he has ST segment elevation and cardiac enzymes are raised what is the probability of hospital death so we will add all these points as as shown in the these are the points and we will add up all these points and the total points is 195 so the probability of hospital death is 16 percent diagnostic evaluation includes uh, ecg cardiac biochemical markers coronary angiography cardiac imaging non-specific indices of the tissue network ECG criteria for the acute MI there should be the convex ST segment elevation of 1 mm pathological Q wave and T wave inversion ECG criteria of the old MI includes the pathological Q wave ST segment in the baseline and T waves uh, may be normal or may be inverted and right one this uh, figure shows the uh, pathological Q waves. The first downward deflection in the ECG is called Q wave. The Q wave is called pathological if it is greater than 3 mm in depth and greater than one third of the height of the R wave. Q wave infarction means infarction of the full thickness myocardium. Non Q wave infarction means infarction of the this is the evolutionary history of the myocardial infarction in the first figure uh, ECG is normal and acute condition as the segment elevation after an hour the Q wave begins to appear and as the segment is still elevated and uh, within one to two days as the Q wave begins to deeper within after days as the segment normalizes and Q waves and T waves are inverted 
after weeks later ST segment and TV by normal and Q wave persist. This diagram shows acute coronary syndrome after the ECG it may be the ST segment elevation and non-ST segment elevation. If the is a non-ST segment elevation then we will go for the cardiac enzymes. If the cardiac enzymes are positive uh, it is called myocardial infarction. If the cardiac enzymes are negative it is called unstable angina. If the cardiac enzymes are positive uh, in the case of the myocardial infarction there are two types of the myocardial infarction as we have discussed Q wave MI in which there is uh, development of the Q wave and uh, non Q wave MI in which there is a sub antibody infarction. It is called unstable. ECG criteria in the posterior wall MI, there are the tall or wave, AC segment depression, and T wave inversion. In this table shows uh, uh, different walls of the heart and their blood supply and the uh, respective ECG changes. If uh, the antiseptal wall is supplied by the left anterior descending artery and the ECG changes uh, will appear in the V1, V2, V3 and V4. The latter wall is supplied by the left circumflex artery and the changes in the ECG will, be, will appear in the 1 AVL, V5, V6. The posterior wall is supplied by the left circumflex artery and the changing will be appear in the V1, V2. Inferior wall is supplied by the right coronary artery and the changing in the ECG will be seen in the 2-3 AVF. Right ventricular wall is supplied by the right coronary artery and the changing will be seen in the right precordial just leads. This is the same thing as shown by the ECG. This ECG uh, shows a, a typical ST segment elevation in lead 2 3 AVF with ST segment depression and T wave inversion in 1 in AVL and V5 V6. This uh, ST segment depression in 1 AVL is called reciprocal depression. This is a, a typical ECG of the um, inferior wall MI ST segment elevation with reciprocal changes. This is the ECG of the right ventricular infarction. It shows a, uh, this ECG shows a ST segment elevation in 2, 3 ABF and while the left side of the diagram shows the right side leads ST segment elevation in B4, B5 and B6 which indicates a right ventricular infarction. This is a typical ECG of the non-ST segment elevation MI. The ECG shows as a segment depression in lead 2, 3, AVF, V4, V5 and V6 as a segment depression. Cardiac biochemical markers drop T and drop I are raised after 3 to 12 hours of MI, 95% sensitivity and specificity. Peak at the 2 days and elevated at the 5 to 14 days. CKMB has higher sensitivity, has a sensitivity of 95% when measured within uh, 24 to 36 hours after the onset of the chest pain increases within 3 to 4 hours and again flattens down after, uh, after 28 to 70. This is the same and uh, gram shows uh, the various biochemical markers in the cardiac infarction. This is the same diagram showing the CKMB um, that begins to appear after uh, 4 to 6 hours and it peaks up to the 24 hours and, and settles down up to the 72 hours while the, um, the, the top I and the top T uh, can persist up to the 7 to 14 days. Coronary angiographic cardiac catheterization allows an invasive assessment of the coronary arteries, cardiac output, aorta, intraortic pressure, left ventricle, oxygen saturation and bypass graft. With coronary angiography there is a possibility to proceed into the we discuss after this. This diagram shows the coronary angiography. On the right side there is a occlusion of the right proximal uh, right coronary artery. On the left side there is stunt placement and the patent right coronary artery. 
if the um, MI not detected on the ECG, then two-dimensional echocardiography is used, shows, which shows a wall motion abnormality and aids in the management and the decision. It also shows the right ventricular infarction, ventricular aneurysm, and pericardial effusion. My particular perfusion imaging very sensitive, but cannot distinguish the acute impact from the chronic impact. Thus, has um, thus has not radio nuclear and the ventriculography technician uh, labeled RBCs are used, which show the wall motion abnormalities. The MRI can be used, it detects a the management includes the initial management, pre-hospital care, recognition of the symptoms by the patients and the prompt seeking for the medical attention. The rapid development of the emergency medical team, expenditure transportation to the patient to the hospital facility and the implementation of the deep perfusion therapy. Clinical risk factor uh, analysis tool as discussed by the GRACE course. After that, analysis is most important. Uh, it is done by the morphine, dimorphine, intermuscular injection are usually avoided. The goal is the control of the cardiac discomfort. It is done by the sublingual uh, nitroglycerin, morphine, intravenous beta blockers. To identify the patient for the perfusion therapy, the triage of the low risk patient to the proper location in the hospital. In ideal condition, the goal is door to dead time should be less than 30 minutes in the case of the thrombolytic therapy. While in the case of the primary coronary angiography, the door to balloon time should be less than 120 minutes. Relieve the ischemic pain when provide the supplemental oxygen if needed and recognition and the treatment of the potential life threatening complications. This picture is taken from your uh, from your textbook Davidson. Uh, after the initial ass assessment of ECG and troponin and oxygen is given if needed, um, thrombotic antithrombotics like aspirin 300 mg, take a corporate uh, 180 mg. If it is ST segment elevation, ACS, and the presenting symptoms are less than 12 hours of the onset, then we will go for the reperfusion therapy. Reperfusion therapy if uh, we are uh, here in the hospital where the primary coronary angiography is available and uh, in the time should be less than 120 minutes, then we will go for the primary coronary angiography. For the primary, if we will go for the primary coronary angiography, then glycoprotein 2B3 a receptor antagonist uh, should be infused. If and the um, time is greater than 120 minutes or we are in a setup where the primary coronary angiography is not possible then we will um, assess the patient either it is eligible for the thrombolytic therapy or not if it is uh, eligible for the thrombolytic therapy then we will go for the thrombolysis and thus chondroparinax and bromolvivid aspirin should be given if the patient is having symptoms and greater than 24 hours uh, or um, the patient is having no ST segment elevation MI, then we will go for the chondroparinx, low molecular weight heparin and nitrate infusion. And we will calculate the gray score uh, in hospital death. Low risk is less than 1%, medium risk 1 to 9%, high risk is 9%. Medium to high risk ACS. In the case of the medium to high risk ACS, in, uh, we will in the early hospital coronary angiography. This is the same slide. In the case of the ST segment elevation MI, uh, I don't know who is a candidate of the deep perfusion therapy. And we first of all we will see initially seen at the PCA uh, capable hospital. Then we will go for the PCA and device to time it should be less than 90 minutes if uh, the primary pc is not available in that hospital then we will go for the uh, transfer of the patient to the patient where the primary coronary angiography is available but the time should be less than 120 minutes 
if then we cannot ship the patient to the uh, uh, hospital where the primary coronary angiography is available then we will go for the administration of the fibrinolytic agent within 30 minutes you do want to need little time to be less than 30 minutes the other medication include the oxygenation if needed analgesia deep fusion therapy is thrombolytic Renin angiotensin blocker, mineralocorticoid receptor, antagonist, lipid loading therapy, smoking cessation, and diet and exercise, and rehabilitation, and implantable defibrillator in the case of the, the primary percutaneous transluminal coronary angiography. It is an invasive procedure in which the infarct related coronary artery is dilated during the acute phase of an MI without prior administration of the fibrinolytic agent. The complication include the dirty peritoneal and the vascular hemorrhage, other evidence of the bleeding, early acute reclusion and the late resting. Thrombolysis following the agents are used as fibrinolytic agent, TPA tissue plasmogen activator, streptokinase, tenoctaplase, retaplase. Thrombolytic therapy should be considered in patient with ST segment elevation MI in two or more leads. Effective is given within the 12 hours but not beyond the 24 hours. It is not indicated if the symptoms have resolved or the patient with ST segment depression. Then these are the absolute contraindications for the thrombolytic therapy. It is intracranial hemorrhage, ischemic strokes within the past within the past year, had trauma, suspected aortic dissection, active internal bleed and blood pressure greater than 180. These are the relative indication uh, which is which includes the allergy to the previous use of streptokinase 5 days to the 10, 2 years. Active peptic ulcer disease, internal bleed 2 to 4 weeks, within 2 to 4 weeks, prolonged CPR greater than 10 minutes, major surgery less than 2 weeks, Known bleeding diathesis, hemorrhage of thalamic condition, severe menstrual bleeding, and pregnancy. These are the relative. This slide shows the dose of the thrombolytic agent for the myocardial infarction. In the case of the streptokinase, it is 1.5 million units over the 60 minutes. In the case of the retaplase, uh, 10 milligram IV bolus over the 2 minutes for it by. IV bolus of the 10 mg over the 30 minutes. Yeah. Other medication include anticoagulation, unfractionated heparin, initial bolus of the 60 units per kg, maximum of the 5000 units, followed by the infusion of the 18 units per kg per hour, and maximum uh, 1000 units per kg to keep the APTT of the 1.5 to the 2 times of the control. Low molecular weight have been oxaprin 1 mg per kg BID. Other antithrombotic therapy includes the aspirin, P2Y12 receptor antagonist, tegravil, prasagul, and cropidopril, glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors, tadofibran, apexiban. It is only indicated in highest risk unstable angina and STEMI patient. In whom the early PC is planned. Uh, Apex map is the choice if early angiography and PC is planned. Tyrofibon is indicated when no PCA. The analgesia, adequate analgesia is required to relieve uh, the distress, to lower the adrenergic drive, and thereby reduce the vascular resistance, BP, infarct size, and susceptibility to the ventricular arrhythmia. Intravenous opioids, initially morphine sulfate 5 to 10 mg or diamorphine 2.5 to 5 mg and antiemetic, initially metoclopramide 10 mg should be administered. Intramuscular injection. Nitrate sublingual preparation used glycerol, sublingual glycerol trinitrate 300 to 500 microgram. If still pain continues, then IV nitrates and should be avoided in patient with the hypotension. The dose adjustment may be performed every 5 minutes at 10 microgram per minute 
until the chest pain resolves or the heart rate increases and BP decreases or more than this is the mechanism uh, of the nitrates nitrates causes a release of the increase in the nitric oxide it causes activation of the carbon dioxide in increase in this of the cyclic GMP which causes the relaxation of the vascular smooth muscles this uh, slide shows the effects of the nitrates it causes a vasodilation which uh, causes a decrease in the preload and arterial dilation which causes a decrease in the afterload both of which causes a decrease in the oxygen the myocardial oxygen demand these are the certain adverse effects of the nitrates postural hypotension and syncope tachycardia drug rash facial flushing throbbing headache and the prolonged high dose uh, methemo next drug is a beta blocker they reduce the myocardial ischemia and infarct size and myocardial rupture these are the certain adverse reactions of the uh, beta blockers which are uh, fatigue and weakness, hyperglycemia, nightmares, hallucination, depression, increase in the plasma triglyceride, decrease in the HDL cholesterol, discontinuation after the long and uh, long term exacerbate angina. These are the contraindications of the beta blocker. In the case of the acute heart failure, chronic, chronic heart failure, AV block, peripheral vasodilation, hypotension, and bronchial asthma. Renin and Utensin block for long term treatment of the AC inhibitor such as Anilacryl and Remipril can counteract the ventricular demodeling, prevent the onset of the heart failure, improve survival, and reduce the decant MI and avoid the DO. Avoid in the hypovolemic or hypotensive patient because AC inhibitor may exacerbate the hypotension and impair the coronary perfusion. In patient intolerant to the ACE inhibit ARB such as Falsartan or Candisartan should be given. In the velocorticoids, the patient with the acute MI and after ventricular discomfort is dysfunction, ejection fraction less than 35% and either the pulmonary edema or diabetes mellitus further benefit from the additional velocorticoid receptor and should be given. The lipid lowering therapy all the patients should receive therapy with HMG CoA reductase statins after the acute coronary syndrome irrespective of the cholesterol concentration. The patient with serum LDL cholesterol concentration above the 120 mg per deciliter benefit from more intensive therapies such as atorvastatin 80 mg per day and zuzubastatin 40 mg. All the patient after the ACS should receive the statin regardless of the cholesterol it is these are the high intensity statin moderate intensity statin and low intensity statin nursing intervention and reducing the pain handling the patient carefully with while providing the initial care starting iv infusion obtain the baseline vital signs and attracting the electrodes for, for ecg monitoring maintain the oxygen saturation greater than 92 percent administer the oxygen by nasal cannula. Hospital phase management, bed rest for the 12 hours under the supervision of the upright position sitting in chair in 24 hours. In absence of the shock or hypotension, second day can the patient can go to the washroom on wheelchair and can take the shower or stand in the sink. The end of, at the end of the third day, the activity for the first 4 to 12 hours, clear food or endure, 30% less of the total calories complex carbohydrate should take 50% of the calories. In the case of the bowel, bed, bedside compound should be used, diet rich in the bulk, stool softeners and laxative should be After the medical therapy and including the thrombolysis, disc assessment should be done. Stress test is done to determine the prognosis and the functional capacity capability. 
it can perform four to six days after the MI and can also performed after the hospital discharge two to three weeks or late after the discharge three to six weeks if initial have the post infarction stress was submaximal. Secondary prevention, the goal of the secondary prevention is to produce a favorable impact on the mortality and morbidity. The antiplatelet agents as seventy five to three seventy five milligram per day should be used indefinitely. Clopidogrel seventy five milligram per day for the maximum of the nine months. Rivaroxaban two point five milligram twice daily in addition to the hundred milligram of the aspirin, eighty to hundred milligram of the aspirin. Ace inhibitor reduces the mortality and incidence of the heart failure. It should be continued. The treatment should be given indefinitely. The benefit as seen in patient with left ventricle dysfunction, injection fraction less than 40% and all the patients of the MI. The beta blocker reduces the cardiac event after the MI and should be used indefinitely. Cholesterol treatment with the ACS and the ST segment elevation MI, it should be less than 100 mg per deciliter. It is the target of the cholesterol. Tobacco cessation should be done in a proper diet and the body mass index of the less than 25 gram per meter square BMI is a desirable. The target diabetes should be less, HbA1c should be less than 7. The goal of the exercise, the minimum goal of the exercise is 3 to 4 days per week of 30 to 60 minutes. Of activity in those who are physically capable. Follow-up routine office visit every four to twelve months are suggested for the one year. Now we will move towards the complication. The, these include the pericardial complication, which includes the pericarditis, Dressler syndrome, pericardial effusion. Thromboembolic complication includes thromboembolism, venous thrombosis, and pulmonary embolism. Lactical complication includes the ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, supraventricular tachyarrhythmias, bradyarrhythmias, atrioventricular block like first, second, and third degree blocks. These all are discussed in the sub. Vascular complication, recurrent ischemia, recurrent infarction, and mechanical complication, left ventricular free wall rupture, ventricular subtract rupture, papillary muscle rupture with acute mitral decarceration. The myocardial complications are congestive heart failure, hypotension, cardiogenic shock, right ventricular infarction, and anovis The post-infarction ischemia, it is treated by the uh, nitrates, beta blocker, clopidogrel, and aspirin, arrhythmias, sinus bradyarrhythmia, sinus bradycardia, supraventricular tachycardia, and ventricular arrhythmia. Hypotension and shock. The patient with the hypotension should be treated with a successive boluses of the 100 ml of the normal slant until the pulmonary capillary branch pressure reaches the 15 ml of HD. Dopamine is the most appropriate for the cardiogenic hypotension initiated at the dose of the uh, 2 to 4 microgram per kg per minute. The right ventricular infarction, it is associated with inferior wall MI. Diagnosis is suggested by the ST segment elevation in the right sided anterior leads, particularly in the R waves in V4. It is confirmed by the echocardiography. Mechanical defects, the rupture of the papillary muscle and intraventricular septa usually occurs in 3 to 7 days, detected by the new systolic murmur, confirmed by the doctor echocardiography. Surgical intervention is mandatory. Myocardial rupture. Complete rupture occurs in 1% of the patient and results in the immediate death. It occurs in 2-7 to seven days post-infarction. It involves an anterior wall. Incomplete rupture recognized by the echocardiography, radionuclear angiography. Early surgical repair is indicated. Left ventricular aneurysm. It occurs in the 10 to 20 percent of the patient, usually follows the anterior wall infarction, recognized by the persistent ST segment elevation beyond the 4 to 8 weeks. They rarely rupture, but associated with arterial thromboemboli, ventricular arrhythmias, and chronic heart failure. 
surgical resection may be performed. Pericarditis is involved in 50% of the infarction, but the pericarditis is often not clinically significant. Pericardial pain occurs in 2 to 7 days, recognized by its variation in the position and respiration. Improved by the sitting, often no treatment is required, but aspirin 650 mg to 6 hours, 6 to 4 to 6 hours, will usually relieve. Lastly, Dressler syndrome. It occurs in 1 to 12 weeks after the infarction. It is an autoimmune phenomena, presents as a pericarditis associated with fever, leukocytosis, pericardial or the pleural effusion. Thank you. It's all about the acute coronary syndrome.